This is the first video in my Crash Course Trigonometry series. In this series, I'm going to go through most of the topics that you would see relating to trigonometry in a pre-calculus course. So you can use this series to review those topics if you're taking that course, or if you're in a later course, you can use this series to review either all of the topics from trigonometry, or you can jump around and pick and choose any specific topics that you'd like to review. So to get us started, we're going to start talking about angles. So what is an angle? Well, before we can define what an angle is, we need to talk about a ray. An array is a portion of a line that starts at a point, which is called the vertex of the ray, and continues indefinitely in one direction. So it's going to look something like this. So it's basically half a line. So we're not talking about the half that I've drawn dotted there. Here's the vertex. And then all of this stuff is what we call a ray. Now an angle is formed by two rays that share the same vertex. So it might look something like this. There's one ray and there's another ray and there's that vertex that is shared by those two rays and we call that the vertex of the angle. So if we have an angle that's represented by two rays, then that angle represents a rotation that starts on one of the rays and we call that the initial side of the angle and ends at the other ray. We call that the terminal side of the angle. So if I try to redraw those two rays that I just drew on the previous slide, something like this, again, here's that vertex, we can think of those two rays as representing, for example, this rotation. So the rotation that starts on this initial side and ends on this terminal side. But it's important to note that those same two rays, if I try to draw the same picture over here, those same two rays can represent a different rotation. So for example, I could represent the rotation that starts over here and actually spins around a couple times before ending over here. It's the same two rays, but obviously a very different rotation. And this time the initial side is over here and the terminal side is over here. So the main thing to keep in mind is that just because you have the two rays doesn't mean that you necessarily know what rotation those two rays represent. So that's just something that we're going to have to be keeping in mind as we go forward. And of course, this is the point that I just made, right? So the same angle formed by the same rays, that can represent many different rotations. Now, by convention, we talk about counterclockwise rotation as being positive rotation and clockwise rotation as being negative rotation. There's really no inherent reason why one is called positive and one is called negative, but it's just useful for us to be able to distinguish clockwise versus counterclockwise in this way. And it turns out that there's some mathematical formulas that are made a little bit nicer, a little bit easier to understand if we adopt this convention. So it might, might seem a little bit backwards because you think, okay, counterclockwise, shouldn't that be negative? But by convention, in mathematics, we use counterclockwise as positive rotation and clockwise as negative. Now, another thing that we're going to often want to do with our angles is that we say that an angle is in standard position if its vertex lies at the origin and its initial side lies along the positive x-axis. Now, again, important to note here, an angle doesn't have to be in standard position. It's just that if it is in standard position, that's something that we like and, and we can talk about nice things happening there. So the picture would look something like this. So here are my axes, here's my x-axis and my y-axis. So an angle in standard position might look something like this. So in this case, we draw our angle where the initial side is along that x-axis and then the terminal side is you know, probably somewhere else. So maybe down here. And again, as we saw, this could indicate many different rotations. One rotation this could represent would be the counterclockwise positive rotation that starts on that positive x-axis and goes around to that terminal side. But again, those same two rays could represent a very different rotation. So again, I've got my angle in standard position. So here's my initial side and here's my terminal side. So we don't have quite as much flexibility as we had before because I'm insisting that the initial side is the side that's along the positive x-axis. So whatever rotation I draw here has to start on that positive x-axis. But again, I can go clockwise, I can go counterclockwise, I can spin around many, many times. So I can do, for example, something like this. That rotation would be also represented by those two rays and that angle would be in standard position. Now, another thing we'll often talk about with angles is that when we have an angle that's in standard position, if that terminal side lies in one of the quadrants, either quadrant one, quadrant two, three, or four, we'll say that the angle lies in that quadrant. 
So again, the picture might look something like this. Here are my axes, x-axis, y-axis. If you're not familiar with the numbering of quadrants, the way we number them is again counting counterclockwise. So we start with quadrant one up here, which is where x and y are both positive, and then we go around in a counterclockwise orientation. So we have quadrant two over here, quadrant three in the bottom left, and then quadrant four in the bottom right. So that's just how we number those quadrants. And then again, if we had an angle, something that looked like this, we would say that this angle is in quadrant two because its terminal side is in quadrant two and the angle is in the standard position. And again, maybe that represents this rotation. There's lots of different rotations, as we've talked about, that can be represented by the same pair of rays. Now, one thing to note here is that there are other angles that don't fit this definition. So for example, we could have an angle where the terminal side of the angle, again, we're in standard position, so our initial side is on the positive x-axis, but maybe the terminal side is actually also along an axis. So this angle here, where the initial side is the positive x-axis and the terminal side is the positive y-axis, this angle does not actually lie in any of the quadrants. In a sense, it lies on the border between quadrant one and quadrant two. So we would say that that angle does not actually lie in any of the quadrants. So again, most of what we're talking about here is just kind of establishing some terminology, some language. So you may want to come back to this video a little bit later in the series uh, if you need to refresh your memory on what some of these terms mean. And again, if we want to think about why this is useful, why do we care about trigonometry, angles show up in the real world all over the place. So for example, here we have a house, and we could think of the angles here formed by the roof. Think of those two rays. We could think of an angle over here formed by the windows, so maybe this angle here or this angle down here. We could think of the angle between the post and the ground, right? So we've got all sorts of angles here that might be interesting to know something about, to measure. And then as we'll see, trigonometry is a way for us to use angles to perform calculations that let us uh, design objects and in, in, that involve angles and triangles and things like that. So there really are a lot of applications to these ideas. Okay, so just to review what we talked about in this video, we've defined the words ray and angle. We talked about the initial side and terminal side of an angle. We defined vertex. We talked about angles being positive or negative, and we also talked about angles that being in standard position. In the next video, we're going to start talking about ways of measuring angles. So again, all we talked about today was positioning angles and the words that we use to describe angles. So we're going to talk about how to measure angles and we'll also define radian measure of angles, which is something that uh, messes some people up sometimes. So if you are confused about radians, take a look at the second video in this series.